The final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion Number 12210 in the name of Christian Allard on North East Mosses. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I'd be most grateful if those members who wish to participate in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on Christian Allard to open the debate. Seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. First of all, let me thank all the members who signed the motion and the one who going to participate in this debate today. Uh, when I came into this Parliament, I was uh, introduced and commented upon and saying that I, I was rooted into the North East. It's maybe uh, something I was rooted on is definitely uh, the moss of West Hill, even if you can be rooted into a moss, which is it's not going to be that easy. And, I thought about talking about this debate, uh, pairing the two mosses, uh, the one Arnold Moss in West Hill, the place where I live, uh, and uh, is in the constituency of my friend Dennis Robertson, MSP for Abinshire West, and of course uh, the other one, which is the Portlethen Moss, uh, who is my friend as well, and now Minister, the MSP for South Abinshire and North King Garden, Maureen Watt. And there's two uh, moss I've got a lot of uh, things in common, and one is it, of course, is uh, all the volunteers who uh, work very, very hard uh, to look after it and to show it off uh, to the rest of the residents. I, I was myself a volunteer at one time into the Arnold Moss Advisory Group Committee, presenting officer, and what attracted me the most was maybe two words, and the words were beastie safari. Uh, it was a, a great way to advertise uh, a free family event uh, for our local natural reserve in West Hill. And uh, it was great to see all those children going to this beastie safari and thinking that we're going to discover something extraordinary. And in fact, it's something extraordinary because the moss is home to many different wildlife species, including roe deer, foxes, red squirrels, along with many small birds and insects. And, uh, of course, uh, in a moss, you will find a habitat for frogs. Uh, the site, uh, through mainly woodland, as also as an area of open ground. And you can see some of the photos uh, for the Wasted one on the Facebook page, uh, Facebook, which I opened a long, long time ago. And I will encourage anybody visiting the moss uh, to take photos and to put them on the Facebook page and sharing them with everybody. So how active are these groups? Are? But the one in West Hill is quite uh, active. It's got a new footpath uh, some years ago, which provides a proper link between Arnold Moss and the nearby Denerman Park through the West Hill Industrial Estate, where a lot of people work and of course where we have our local retailer. So we've got a lot of people from the uh, Western Estate who go through the moss uh, at lunchtime and a lot of uh, pupils' academy, uh, the, uh, pupils from the academy, local academy, who go through the moss uh, to go to the local retailer. So a lot of people who are, who are enjoying it every day. And hundreds of trees have been planted, which is not very good for a moss, but a, a, around the moss just to make sure that uh, the new path uh, is provided a screening between the path and the road. And purples from the West Hill Academy have helped to plant some of these trees and they still installed a lot of bird boxes. Uh, they had a support with mentoring from the West Hill uh, Men Shed, which is of course uh, very celebrated in this parliament, this Men Shed uh, with uh, a lot of uh, men in retirement who are very much part of the community and the heart of the community. And uh, the people that was part of the John Muir Award uh, that the pupils were doing. And of course, we've got some manpower, our, uh, one manpower coming, presenting officer from, uh, uh, from outside. And it's provided by the community payback teams, which is a great benefit for them and a great benefit for the community as well, a good way to interact with the local community. And the Arnold Moss Advocacy Group Committee member, a local resident, Sally Leeper, uh, said uh, at the time that Arnold Moss Local Re Natural Reserve is a rural wildlife heaven in the center of West Hill. It is a very special place, and we hope that local people will enjoy the natural environment and the wildlife to be seen as a site. Uh, I need to note Graham Allen as well, who's been the chair for many years before he, stu he stood down, and we'd like to thank him for his work. And of course, as the animal must will ne not be the great place that it is uh, for everybody to enjoy, if it's not for the daily attention of uh, another volunteer, David Kutz, who really has been the guardian of a na natural reserve in West Hill. I had the pleasure to meet Ellen Young, uh, the King Garden and Mans Derringer, a few weeks ago uh, regarding the Portland Moss Conversation Group, which is edited by the founder, uh, Dennis 
uh, Denise Martin. Uh, she's on holiday just now and she couldn't make the debate, uh, but I'm sh she, she made sure to let me know about the land ownership issue, which I'll come back later on about. Uh, from the Portland and Moss Convention Group Facebook page, you can see that pupils are working as well of the local primary school. Uh, the rangers are holding uh, a regular uh, evening deep pond a survey in, in last April, and uh, conversation, uh, conservation volunteers are doing tree planting as well, not at the moss itself, but their entrance to the moss to make sure to protect the moss again. Uh, the group were awarded a highly commended in the final of the 2014 ISBP Nature of Scotland Awards in the Community Initiative, uh, initiative category. And the volunteers have prepared slides for the presentation for today. But unfortunately, very few MSP being here uh, today uh, because of this uh, important week that we have in politics. Uh, we thought that it would be better maybe uh, to uh, delay it for, for another time. I would like to thank Emma Williams as well as, well as the Environment Planner uh, at the Fabian Shire Council who provides uh, management for both uh, uh, the, the, the Moses uh, management plan, which one of them has been given by uh, SPICE uh, for, uh, for people to see. And uh, race bogs are found in lowland areas of Scotland. The decomposition plant materials forms uh, large domes over the land, which then gradually grow with as it accumulates rainwater, causing it to be raised above the surrounding land. These bogs are increasingly rare in Scotland, in good condition, uh, due to a range of factors in the way land is used, such as farming, which is, of course, predominant in the north, in the northeast, and housing development as well, who could have an impact, and that's particularly true uh, for Port Lethen and West Hill. Presenting officer, uh, Scotland's rich ecology is dependent on our delicate environmental balance. The terrain of our land contributes to much of this environment composition. 20% of Scotland and landmass is peatland, with 5,000 hectares in the northeast alone. So peatland can store up to 25 times as much carbon as the rest of Scotland vegetation. It's playing a vital role to the carbon cycle and effectively regulating greenhouse gases. Much of our drinking water comes from peatland, and it provides, of course, areas of recreation, uh, which is a point of, uh, that, uh, of my motion, uh, from radiant stalking to angling to walking and, and, and many more activities. A, pop a popular ingredient to many malt whiskies as well. Uh, however, up to 80% of Scotland's peatlands are damaged, and some of the members will maybe reflect that in the areas later on. Damaged boats often no longer irrigate clean house gas contamination of the atmosphere, and they can also contaminate, contaminate water springs. The Scottish Government has done well, allocated 15 million to assist in the restoration of Scotland damaged peatland in 2013. It was followed up with recent additional uh, 6.7 million of Scottish Government funds to the Scottish Natural Heritage to kickstart the restoration of peatlands across Scotland. Uh, to uh, conclude, uh, Presiding Officer, I just would like uh, to talk about, to come back to that idea of land, land ownership. Land ownership. Uh, I will seek the, the full support of the Scottish Government to promote community ownership uh, for uh, some of these mosses and these natural reserves uh, where communities are involved as the Western and Port Lethen residents are. There is a, a, an issue in Port Lethen. I wrote to the, uh, to the uh, people who own most part of, of the moss to see if there's a way of community buyout or maybe leasing pa part of the land. So I look forward to the contribution of uh, other members, and particularly on, on these issues. And uh, like David Kutz, uh, I, I would like to think that we want all to be guardians of our heritage and the heritage of the peatlands areas all, all, all across Scotland. Presiding officer. Many thanks. I now turn to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes or so, please. And I call Rob Gibson to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, President Officer. It's a pleasure to speak in this debate. I'd like to congratulate uh, Christian Allard for gaining this debate because uh, we are a parliament that takes our peat bogs and mosses seriously. Uh, the, wasses, the mosses of waters, slaps and styles. Uh, the words of Robert Burns, people have been used to uh, passing over these areas, have uh, in history uh, perhaps avoided some of them because they could be rather treacherous. But today we've got a wider view of the way in which the mosses add to our landscape and heritage and the natural uh, balance of nature in each area. And 
at Arne Hall and Port Lethen. It's two examples of small local uh, uh, mosses which are being looked after by local people. And I think that the last points that Christian Allard made are very important. If we can empower local people to look after such small sites, then we actually are going to gain conservation by local consent rather than have designations implied from above on people without their say-so. Because when they take ownership of these things, then I believe that uh, the land will benefit from that. And it's clear from the reports by Aberdeenshire Council that these small areas have the kinds of plans which people buy into. But it'd be even better if they actually had direct control at the most local level possible. So I fully support Christian Allard's views of these things. From my point of view in the Rural Affairs and Climate Change Committee, it's important to recognise that uh, there are uh, large amounts of work being uh, carried out on understanding what the peat bogs do for us. And in a report which the Scottish Wildlife Trust uh, published at the end of uh, 2012, they identified 27,880 hectares of uh, uh, raised bogs, which these would be lowland raised bogs, uh, which uh, some 2,000 acres or uh, hectares are in uh, a reasonable condition. But that's measured at the national level. And we can't measure in each area just exactly how much uh, the particular heathland or bog is ad adding to our uh, store of carbon and how much they're helping us to reduce the loss of carbon. But it might be possible through citizen science, through people who are involved, to do simple measurements that can allow us some baseline data of areas like Arden Hall, for example. And as we're dealing tomorrow with uh, the subject of uh, adding nitrogen trifluoride to our list of greenhouse gases, we're understanding all the more about the way in which uh, these gases are being released in all sorts of ways. Our committee is dealing with that in the morning. But already the greenhouse gas emissions data from 2012 shows that in methane, which is released from peat uh, in, in great amounts, is understood to be far more potent than we knew before. And therefore understanding uh, precisely what is being emitted from areas like the small raised bogs and heathland of Arne Hall and so on is important to know eventually as well because it's having to be measured at a greater level outside of these areas. So let me say in my short speech that I'm delighted to support Christian Allard. There's a wider interest in these uh, uh, small mosses and I hope that we're able to uh, encapsulate even more information, but indeed pleasure of people not just in taking ownership of areas like this, but using them for the recreation, which he talked about so much. That's the first step to understanding and a rebalancing in nature. Thank you. Many thanks. And I now call Stuart Stevenson. Uh, thank you very much, presiding officer. And uh, Christian Allard's uh, motion before us today invites us to recognise the importance of raised bogs, known as mosses, to local ecosystems of unique animal and plant life. And I think uh, it is quite proper that we do that. In particular, the uh, Arnhill moss, uh, which is uh, also referred to in the motion, uh, owned as it is by Aberdeenshire Council, and operated by them, I think uh, in their management plan they describe it very well and capture what makes it important. It says it stands as an isolated green island in a sea of urban development. And I think that tells us two things. First of all, that uh, such uh, provisions as there are to protect uh, Arnhill moss and other similar ones are important for the diversity of the ecosystems that we have in Scotland. And uh, uh, I've quoted before the first law of uh, epigenetics, the more highly optimized an organism is for one environment, the more adversely it is affected by a change in that environment. In other words, there is an intrinsic value in diversity. 
uh, that enables the environment to respond to change in a way that it would not if there was monocultures and limited diversity. And the bog at Arnhill, as elsewhere, uh, fulfills that purpose. But more fundamentally, it also fills the purpose of supporting people in the local community of West Hill uh, and uh, similarly at Port Lethen, Moss at Port Lethen. Uh, because being next to nature is something that benefits uh, human beings as well. Improves mental health, provides opportunity for physical exercise and gives us access to a wide range uh, of wildlife. Now, for my own part, I live 400 metres uh, from Reedside Moss. And Reedside Moss is actually substantially bigger uh, than either of the ones uh, described in the motion. The Arnhill uh, Moss is about 10 hectares. Reedside Moss is approaching 100 hectares. Um, Arnhill uh, Local Nature Reserve was established in 1992. Uh, I have a parliamentary answer from Jamie Lindsay in the House of Lords uh, from 1995. Uh, which uh, shows that as early as that date, uh, Reedside Moss, my near neighbour, uh, was being considered for uh, special protection, which was granted uh, in 2004 under the Natura uh, 2000 initiative from the European Union. Now, the sort of wildlife we have, and which I experience uh, partly from my adjacency uh, to uh, the Reedside Moss, is roe, foxes, um, weasels, rabbits, uh, and of course a wide range of bird life as well uh, from the UK's smallest bird, the goldcrest, which is a regular visitor to us, uh, to one of our nearly, nearly our biggest bird, uh, the golden eagle, which we get for a few weeks a year, adolescence as they leave uh, the Erie that's about uh, 20 kilometres away, uh, and barn owls as well, who of course... Uh, uh, delight us uh, overnight. So a rich diversity of natural life, but more importantly, a rich diversity of plant life in box. Um, the presence of water, the high degree of acidity, gives us a differentiation in the kind of life that there is in bog that is very important to support uh, the diversity upon which we should place uh, uh, great value. Now, they also form part of my family history. My father uh, used to speak of uh, his falling into a bog in the 1930s, wearing his kilt and full military uniform, uh, and how that uh, was something that he didn't particularly enjoy. Um, I more recently have found myself, when I was searching for a missing cat, going to Reedside Moss to see if uh, the cat had got there. It was in December and I fell through the ice up to my waist. It was probably quite dangerous, the truth be told. But I think uh, the, the mosses that we have across Scotland, the raised bogs uh, that support them, are a very important part of Scotland. I'm delighted that we're having this debate about uh, the raised bogs, the mosses, uh, tonight. I hope that although we are few in numbers tonight, uh, that what we say tonight is uh, noticed much more widely than perhaps the limited numbers are here. And I look forward with interest to hearing what the minister is going to do to help us to continue to enjoy uh, the benefits of our local mosses right across Scotland, but in particular in West Hill and Port Leth, presiding officer. Many thanks. And I now invite Ailey McLeod to respond to the debate. Minister, around seven minutes or so. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. And can I start, like uh, other members, by thanking uh, Christian Allard for raising this important issue and for securing time for this evening's debate on recognising the importance of raised bogs known as mosses and especially those in the north east of Scotland. And many of the contributions have been made by members uh, this evening have been you know, great illustrations of the benefits that our natural environment provides and how they can be recognised and enjoyed by communities across Scotland and the timing of uh, tonight's debate, presenting officer, is topical in that it falls within the United Nations International Year of Soils. And for that, I'd like to thank um, Rob Gibson, MSP, for hosting a reception in the Parliament at the end of March to mark the beginning of that year. Now, this has been a fantastic opportunity to recognise the many benefits that our soils provide, biodiversity, 
support for economic activity, water quality and climate change mitigation to name an important view, but underpinning our very existence and quality of life. Now, raised bogs are an important type of our soils. Raised bogs are, in layman's terms, raised domes of peat, typically in a wider landscape of agricultural land use, and they need to be managed to avoid becoming scrubland and drying out. Now, the Scottish Government has... Take an intervention. Stuart Stevenson. Um, I wonder if the Minister would share with me that sometimes some of the issues affecting our bogs are what happens outside the designated areas when farmers perhaps put in new drainage that affect uh, uh, the, the wetness of bogs and the ability to access water or to take water away in an inappropriate way. Minister. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I would accept that point that's been made by uh, Mr Stevenson, you know, because the Scottish Government has long recognised the importance over peatlands. I mean, last year with uh, Scottish Natural Heritage, we consulted on a national peatland plan and this set out the benefits of peat and it highlights the actions that are and can be taken to support land managers to protect, manage and where needed restore peatlands. And building on that consultation, I look forward to launching the final lines plan in the near future. Now, the work by these community groups that have been highlighted here and their supporters is providing this management and the associated benefits. And raised bogs are a very particular environment and they support a range of species often not found elsewhere in Scotland, as we've already heard from Christian Allard. And this makes them you know, hugely fascinating places. So I you know, really do applaud the engagement with the local community to help manage and use these important and special landscapes. And the very fact that they are looked after by local people, you know, the engagement with schools in the wider community is a tremendous result by the North East Mosses groups. And this is an excellent example of the approach that we promote in the 2020 Challenge for Biodiversity, an approach which involves people in their local environment. Now, we know that biodiversity is a key component of our lives and involving local people, particularly young people, in this type of activity will help to foster a long-term desire to understand and care for our environment. You know, it provides a practical first-hand opportunity to appreciate our natural environment and the many services it provides. And whilst I haven't visited these particular areas yet, I have seen this approach to managing a raised bog at first hand earlier this year when I visited the Scottish Wildlife Trust's reserve at Kerskowen Moss, which is between Newton Stewart and Wigton, just off the A714 in Galloway, if anybody would like to visit it. My visit to Kerskowen Moss took me by surprise, and I was surprised not just by the engagement the Scottish Wildlife Trust volunteers and staff had with the site or the impressive and pioneering work that had been done to restore the site and its ongoing uh, active management, nor being surprised by the value and benefits this site provided. But what, what surprised me, presenting officer, was all the positive reactions that I received on social media afterwards. And key for me was the connection that people could find for our bogs and wider peatlands and the benefits they provided. Like, because historically, peatlands have been low-key and under-recognised. And I think Rob Gibson highlighted a very good point about the need to understand peatlands' carbon uh, contribution. And certainly this is you know, an issue that we have been actively working on, including understanding wider issues such as methane. Now, land managers also have a particular role to play, but they do require support from others. And this recognition, the positive recognition, I think bodes well for the future, because currently, 62% of blanket bog, 58% of raised bog, and 69% of fen, marsh, and swamp features on designated sites are in favourable conditions, and others are not. So action is needed to improve these peatlands to maximise their benefits and contribution to Scotland. And that's why we are highlighting work to restore peatlands under our priority projects for action in the Biodiversity 2020 route map, which will be published soon. And just picking up on a few other themes, presenting officer, um, community-based initiatives such as these two reserves are an opportunity, as I said before, for increasing engagement and understanding of the environment. The 2020 challenge recognises the role of biodiversity in providing education benefits, and it reflects the role of outdoor learning in the curriculum for excellence. And also, you know, the links between biodiversity and health, which is also a point that uh, Stuart Stevenson uh, made when he reminded us that you know, being nice to nature actually benefits us all. And the route map 
builds on the good work that's already underway to promote the health benefits of the environment. And that's twofold in terms of encouraging our increase. Dennis Robertson. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, uh, the Minister uh, would be more than welcome to come to Aberdeenshire West to see at first hand, obviously, the mosses at, uh, at West Hill. And I'm sure the Rector at uh, West Hill Academy would be more than delighted to extend an invitation for you to come see how curriculum works within his school. Minister. Uh, thank you very much for that, Presiding Officer. And I would, of course, be absolutely delighted uh, to come and visit um, some other mosses. So I'm more than happy uh, if the member would like to extend me uh, an invitation. Uh, presiding officer, in uh, conclusion, can I uh, thank Christian Allard again for bringing this important issue to the chamber uh, this evening. I very much welcome this debate, and you know I think uh, in doing so, uh, Christian Allard has enabled us, you know, to highlight the benefit of a protected and managed natural environment. I, you know, genuinely I applaud the effort of the Port Lethen Moss Conservation Group and the Arnold Moss Management Advisory Group. And finally, presiding officer, I think in thanking you know, members for their contribution in tonight's debate, I would encourage others to consider what opportunities that they may have uh, for the areas that they represent in this regard. So thank you very much. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes Christian Allard's debate on North East Mosses, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.